Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm a senior technician and the warranty specialist over here at Volt Bike Headquarters. Today, by popular demand, we are going to go over a BMS reset, uh, which is basically where you pull the fuse out of the battery in order to reset the battery management system. Uh, occasionally, what can happen is if there's a spike in voltage or an excessive draw in current, uh, the uh, battery management system will shut down as a failsafe and this uh, of course does require a reset uh, in order to make the battery functional again. Uh, so for this task you're going to require a number one Phillips screwdriver. Uh, it's a very very smart idea because we are dealing with electricity to be using some rubber gloves and uh, a needle nose set of pliers is also quite beneficial. Now for the purposes of this particular video I'm going to be using an electric screwdriver just to speed things up here. All right, so here is your standard retention battery system. You've got a top section with the actual LED panel, and then you've got your bottom section with the charge port. The fuse actually lies in the top section. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four Phillips screws there. These are going to need to be extracted. Huge word of caution, number one, you're dealing with lithium, which is a highly volatile material, so do not perform this operation in the rain. If you're stuck out in the middle of the trail somewhere and it's um, you know, raining quite severely, uh, don't undertake this procedure. Uh, you're just gonna risk, uh, number one, electrical shock, uh, two, possibly fire. So you wanna make sure you're in some dry, warm conditions when performing this. Uh, number two, again, use some gloves. Uh, often the connection of the fuse back into the system uh, closes the circuit for those cells and you'll see a spark. So that's again something to be mindful of. So we're going to jump right into this here. As you can see, the proximity of this particular screw is very close to the port. If you cross those two terminals, you will have an arc and you will potentially cause damage. You could potentially get into electric so shock situations. So again, uh, do be mindful of your tool proximity to that port. All right, so we'll jump right in here. Again, I'm gonna put on my rubber gloves to prevent myself from getting some shock. And now again, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna use my electric screwdriver, again, a number one Phillips to remove these screws. You can see they are fairly long, and there are different lengths from the top to the bottom, so don't mix them up. There's two. You can leave them staged in there, it's not a big deal. Again, watch your proximity to the port. Three. And you can see the shorter ones at the bottom there. And four. And then you very gently just sort of pry that open and you will see your LED panel where the USB charge port plugs into. There's a little breadboard that's uh, encased in some heat shrink. That's on purpose. Don't deal with that. Right there is where you will see your little fuse element. It actually is clearly labeled fuse. So the top of that actually removes and you can see there's a 45 amp automotive style fuse in there uh, that basically will blow. Um, if you've drawn over 45 amps of current. Now there is a 20 amp limit inside the battery management system, so this is just a double fail safe. So again, in order to reset the battery management system, I'm just gonna firmly grip the plastic side of this, grab the other side with your needle nose pliers and extract the fuse. Don't be shy to inspect the fuse. Normally if a fuse has failed, you'll see a split inside that little piece of metal there. You can replace this fuse if it has failed with a 40 amp uh, automotive fuse, which are a little bit more common, uh, but we also do have these 45 amp ones in stock at the shop as well. So again, so now the battery itself is actually dead with this fuse out because it's no longer closing the circuit. So again, you're just gonna hold on to that base, grab the fuse, and as you reinsert it again, you may see just a little spark as that circuit re gets closed again. So there it goes, you can actually hear and or see it. And usually just push, your, push it in there with your finger. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's nice and deeply seated. You're gonna take the black plastic cover and replace that. And then very carefully put the whole assembly back together. And normally while I'm doing it, I'll actually physically inspect, make sure any of those little small wires aren't actually caught inside there. 
and then it's simply a matter of replacing those screws. You want them seated tightly, but don't over torque them. This uh, top plastic piece is plastic. You don't want to split through that, and you don't want to strip the heads of the fasteners either. Stitch up here. And again, when you're reapplying it, the battery is now hot, so again, watch those positive and negative terminals. You definitely don't want to touch those two together. That's it, and now as you can see from the LED panel lighting up, we've got a functional battery. If you have performed this task, the battery management system has reset and you are not getting the LEDs uh, lighting up, there is a possibility that you may require a replacement LED board. This can be confirmed by doing a voltage test on the battery. There's a positive and negative terminal here. If you hook those up to a voltmeter, set it to DC, it will actually tell you how many volts the battery is pushing. A 48 volt battery will push 54.6 volts at a full charge and at the low threshold around 44 volts. So if you're showing between that value, between 44 and 56, chances are your battery is okay and your LED panel needs to be replaced. We're gonna go over that in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.